Hello, so today we will start our next and last module that is module 4 on case studies. Now here we will actually discuss on one or two particular sensor of uh, MIMS uh, field, okay. but before going to that let us uh, revisit once that what are the different things we learnt. In the first module we learnt about in general what is a MIMS sensor, how does it work and then why we need to go down to uh, like micro or nano scale and what does it change actually in that uh, once we are going from macro to micro or nano scale. And then we studied different mechanical structures and how uh, like uh, what is the relation between the force and deflection. If we apply some force then how the deflection will be or how the deflection will be related to the force. And then also uh, we learned that how in the second module we learned that how we can uh, actually uh, measure that deflection using capacitive method or uh, electrostatic technique. And then in the third module we discussed about different sensors fabrication like what are the different uh, fabrication technique, how we remove a material like etching, how we deposit a material like uh, evaporation and uh, different kind of coating techniques. And now we are going to discuss on a particular sensor and first uh, our first case study will be on pressure sensor. So let us discuss about pressure sensor. So what are different types of pressure sensors? For pressure sensors we know that what it does it actually measures the pressure, pressure of the gas or pressure of the liquid or in a chamber which uh, whatever is our requirement. Now what are different kinds of pressure sensors? The first type is absolute pressure sensor. And in that we measure measure pressure relative to vacuum. So in case of uh, absolute pressure sensor we measure the pressure relative to the vacuum. If we consider vacuum to be 0 pressure then whatever pressure we measure with respect to 0 then that is our absolute pressure sensor like atmospheric pressure measurement is a example of absolute pressure sensor. Next is gauge pressure sensor. Here we measure pressure relative to the atmosphere. atmospheric pressure. Then we have like differential pressure sensor, okay. Before we go to differential pressure sensor, what is the uh, application of uh, this pressure like blood pressure, right. So blood pressure while we measure a patient's blood pressure that is relative to the ambient or the atmosphere, right. So that is a example of gauge pressure sensor. on differential pressure sensor.
here what we do we actually measure pressure or uh, measure actually difference of pressure between two different pressure measurements. So, let us say you have an application such that that you have two chambers and you have to measure the pressure difference between them. So, in that case we can use this kind of differential pressure sensor and example is like uh, high pressure oxidation chambers or uh, things like that. Now, pressure sensor working principle. So, this is the <coughs> general diagram of a pressure sensor where we have a membrane like this as you can see here we have a membrane and then here is the pressure port, pressure port right and the top side is uh, can be vacuum or can be uh, atmosphere at uh, like atmospheric pressure or some other gas pressure also depending on what kind of pressure gauge it is like whether it is absolute pressure sensor or differential pressure sensor or gauge pressure sensor accordingly this top side will be decided. So, let us assume this this is packaged under vacuum and this side the top side is vacuum ok. Now, this is the pressure port of which actually we are measuring the pressure. So, this is connected to some chamber this is connected to some uh, chamber of which uh, pressure we are measuring. Now, as the pressure uh, or the gas pressure comes then what it will happen it will have like ballooning effect and this will this membrane will be deflected this membrane will deflect like that little bit ok and we will measure this deflection of the membrane by some technique and can calculate the pressure. Now, like uh, for this case if we have uh, the membrane of size 2a and let us say the thickness of the membrane is h then from the theory of plates we can write that p equal to e into h to the power 4 by a to the power 4 into 4.54 w0 by h where w0 is the deflection of the membrane plus 2.33 into w0 by h whole cube. So, here this is the expression and this comes from theory of plates. Which is not part of this course and uh, this is the basic uh, mechanical course actually from that we can derive this expression. Now, what is this E? This E is Young's modulus. H is the thickness of the membrane, A is the <coughs> like 2 A is the total uh, um, length of the membrane right and so A is the uh, center like distance from the center like uh, from the center to the periphery it is A. W0 is the deflection of the membrane right. So, W0 is deflection. And so, all of these terms like uh, H is a geometry uh, geometry property right, How whatever uh, dimension we make the membrane accordingly we know H, we know A and 
we know E this is material property and we if we measure if we can measure W0 then we can get P very easily like what is the uh, using this expression we can calculate the pressure. Now what one thing we need to understand is this P is the difference between the top side and the bottom side and as the uh, as the pressure uh, changes accordingly uh, accordingly we will have the deflection. Now deflection this deflection uh, pressure is the nonlinear function of deflection for any uh, general uh, deflection right. But if the W0 is pretty small if W0 by H very very small than 1 then what we can write is pressure changes linearly with deflection. because we can then neglect this W0 by H whole cube term and accordingly we can just get P varies with W0 or this is linear and most of the sensors uh, while we apply for uh, real application we actually uh, need this kind of linear relation because it makes our analysis and use easier. Now what is the basic concept of this pressure sensor as we have shown that there is a pressure port through which the um, uh, which is connected to the membrane and as we apply some pressure the membrane deflects right because it has uh, in this region the pressure is different from compared to this region so the membrane will deflect. Now we can put some sensing element on top or some sensing technique to measure this deflection right and accordingly we can measure the pressure. Now what are uh, like what can be chosen as membrane? First is the our first option or the most uh, popular option is single crystal silicon membrane because the creep fatigue or hysteresis effect are virtually absent in that case. So whatever uh, let us say we apply some pressure and after we release that uh, if we remove that pressure then the membrane co comes back to its original position okay, without any creep or fatigue uh, and um, for silicon actually the Young's modulus and its deflection properties are very well known and standard. So it is uh, usually silicon or SiO2 um, membranes are used for this kind of pressure sensors. Now for sensing element also we have different options. One option is piezoelectric sensors. So piezoelectric sensors means that while we are putting this sensor this will be a piezoelectric material. Now what is the property of piezoelectric material it is if we apply some kind of stress or strain on the piezoelectric material then it generates some voltage okay. So let us say let us say this is a uh, cantilever or membrane and on top of that we have some piezoelectric material then as we deflect or apply some stress then this piezoelectric material is also under that stress and this will generate an electric uh, voltage at that uh, at that element. So be, we, if we can measure that electric voltage and then accordingly we can measure how much is the deflection and how much is the pressure. So this is one case and the case is capacitive like as you can see that uh, in the um, like one of the previous module you have seen that capacitive how does capacitive measurement work for electrostatic case right. So as the membrane deflects the distance between the top plate and the bottom is different right because it is it has now become like a bulge and this minute change in the deflection can be captured by its capacitance but because capacitance for uh, parallel plate arrangement is C equal to epsilon A by D where D is the distance between the two plates and so we can measure the distance between two plates by measuring their capacitance also. Another is piezo resistive. So in this case what we do the material we put has a uh, piezo is a piezo resistive uh, material. Right. So piezoresistive material what is happens is as we apply the force then in the piezoresistive material the resistance of the material actually changes and because of that if we can measure the resistance then we can measure that how much is the deflection and how much is the pressure generated. So let us move to the 
first case that is piezoelectric sensing. So as I was saying that there will be a sensing element which is piezoelectric and piezoelectric element one of the very popular example is PZT or lead zirconium titanate. So this material has such property that if it is uh, if some stress is applied on that material then some potential will be generated and that potential we can measure to measure the uh, applied stress or the, uh, to measure the pressure. So the first point in this regard is piezo electric crystals crystals like quartz um, let's say pzt gives electrical output output under an applied stress. And why this stress is coming? Because the pressure is making the membrane to deflect or bend and because of that that uh, piezoelectric element this stress will be applied. So this is one point. Now another is this does not need any external power. So, as the voltage is itself generated inside the material, we does not need to uh, apply some voltage uh, in this case. So, that is one of the advantage, but the limitation with uh, this technique is silicon is not a piezoelectric material. So what happens is we need to we need to actually externally glue or uh, do something or deposit some PZT material on top of that which is uh, not very convenient all the time with microfabrication technique. So this is one of the uh, one of the, the disadvantage of this technique. Another is that static pressure static pressure measurement is difficult. What does it mean? Means that let us say we have some, um, we are applying some pressure, then this uh, piezoelectric material will be under stress, so it will generate some voltage. Actually what happens that it actually have some charge separation and that charge separation will give us the voltage. Now if this pressure is constant at that point, then the charge also need to be uh, static at that uh, at the two different plates or two different electrodes, but it always does not happen because there is always some kind of leakage happening in between the two plates because this material is not a perfect insulator. So the charge will leak and with time we will see the voltage again comes uh, like voltage decreasing, the generated voltage decreasing whereas the pressure is same, right. So in that case it is actually little bit difficult to measure static pressure. It does not um, because of the charge leakage, it does not keep uh, same uh, output voltage. But if the let us say the membrane is vibrating, so in that case what is happening is that the charge generation is changing with time and with very high frequency. So in if we if it is changing with a high frequency then in that small time period it does not have time to leak through the insulating uh, material or through the PZT material. So in that case we can measure the uh, uh, 
uh, charge oscillation and can measure the how uh, how much frequency or amplitude is the membrane having so in those dynamic uh, cases we can use this kind of piezoelectric sensing next is capacity pressure sensor so in capacity pressure sensor we again we have the same kind of arrangement so we have a diaphragm like this and on the top side also we have a plate now as uh, let's say this is actually connected to the the bottom side is connected to the pressure port so as the material as the gas applies some pressure this uh, this membrane or diaphragm actually deflects and de accordingly the distance between this like the top plate and bottom plate this distance changes and that actually as we have discussed in uh, module 2 that changes the capacitance or the capacitor of these two parallel plates right and so the first point is that detects the deflection as a variation of capacitance between the two plates. The important advantage of this is this is high sensitivity, very high sensitivity. Why this is high sensitivity? Because you see C varies with 1 by D, right? And little bit of change in D will change the C by a uh, significant amount, and uh, this D will change because of the applied pressure. So, we can measure the change in. Uh, uh, D using capacitance and from that we can measure the pressure. Another advantage or merit of this technique is absence of absence of temperature sensitivity. If we assume that uh, there is uh, no effect of temperature on the deflection like or whatever be the pressure if we change the temperature also there will be no uh, change in the deflection then uh, like pressure to deflection is not dependent on the temperature and then according to our uh, parallel plate capacitor formula already we know that that is also not dependent on temperature C equal to epsilon A by D which is not uh, dependent on any of the uh, temperature term. So, we can consider this is uh, temperature insensitive. So, at different temperatures actually we can use this technique which is theoretically but uh, because in practical cases sometimes this epsilon value also changes with uh, temperature if uh, the temperature changes by huge amount then the epsilon can change and so that time temperature sensitivity may come. But if we consider the other cases like the piezoelectric or piezo resistive cases then it has a temperature sensitivity because with temperature the piezoelectric coefficient also can change and also the piezoresistive coefficient also can change. So, this has a higher temperature sensitivity compared to the capacitive pressure sensors. But one of the uh, we can consider it demerit if we uh, see the uh, in case of piezoelectric sensor we already getting a voltage output. So, we do not need a real conversion uh, from one kind of parameter to another, but here we need electronics circuit electronics for C to V, V0 let us say the output V0 conversion. So, we need to connect some kind of electronic circuit which will convert the capacitance to output voltage and another thing is that this C to V 
is not linear it is not easy to make a conversion circuit which will where the applied voltage so ultimately uh, ultimately whatever voltage output we will get that voltage output may not be linear with the capacitance so that add, adds one more complexity in the sensor so we will start with the piezo resistive sensor in the next class thank you